What's up, guys? Welcome to another exciting edition of Real Estate Podcast, episode 375. I'm here with Griffin. I'm here with Trav. And we're cutting tongues and burning drums with Adam. <laughs> boy kills world. Much, yeah, boy kills world. Uh, I kind of called that the assassin chick was going to be his sister, mm-hmm. but the whole fan, like he, he's actually a product of the, that family. I kind of didn't see that coming. I was kind of caught up in the action. I mean, you're lost in the sauce. Yeah. It's what, I mean, I felt like it was one of those movies where, I mean, it, that's what it's, that's what it was made for. Get lost in the sauce. It's over the top. It, it felt very Scott Pilgrim. Yes. But in the heavy rated kind of R. Yeah. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Cause I, I mean, I don't have a problem with Scott Pilgrim versus the world, but it's not a go-to film for me. Yeah. But this, I mean, this is, this is something that you can, this is something you can cut on in the background, man, and just kind of have some mindless fun with it, you know? Yeah. It was very, like, what we saw is exactly what we got from the trailer, plus more. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I was so happy that they didn't try to do anything. It's just a, it's a solid action flick. Oh yeah. With Skarsgård kicking ass while his life is being narrated by Benjamin. Get over like, here. Which, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and I even enjoyed the reasoning behind it. Like yeah. John H. <clears throat> H. John Benjamin was, you know, the voice of the video game. And I think I read somewhere that they're planning a game based on this movie and he's going to be the, the guy that, you know, the announcer. Dude, if they make a game like th- this, it needs to be one of those old school Capcom beat em up. Well, it's not going to necessarily be like Boy Kills World, the game, but you know, the game that they were obsessed with, like the super bro, the really crazy, you know, not, yeah. not Street Fighter, Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. They're going to make that arcade game that him and his sister were... They're gonna. I think they're actually trying to make that an actual game. It did look like cool. Street Fighter. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fucking forward, down. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, just like with the movie poster, poster we're going to have featured on the uh, episode tonight, um, really dig the fist pistol. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. How cool is that? Like, dude, that makes me want to, like, make a monk in D&D <laughs> and give them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, give them the, 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 the fist pistol, the, the fist pistol, pistol, if you will. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, when I, when I saw that, I was like, fist pistol. I was like, dude, I'm starting another band. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm like, that's a, that's a band name or a song name, dude. It was, uh. It was really cool. And the way they had to reload it and everything, like, it was... Oh, for sure. Like, this is the most anime, non-anime movie that I've ever animated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the there was no rhyme or reason for that chick's fucking helmet. But it was no. cool as shit, though. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, why not, you know? See, yeah. it was... It was so close to anime that I looked it up to see if this was based on a pre-existing anime. Cause I'm like it, you know, this is, this is like a manga or something. Yeah. But no, it's just an original. It's a wholly original thing. And I'm like, Jesus, this was great. Well, if you noticed in the, uh, animated credits at the very end, they actually have him and his sister. Like it's at that angle. It's, it's, it's an Akira homage. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, there's obviously, uh, that to me, that was like okay. This this like the writing for the film clearly because it felt like you said it felt very anime, but it didn't feel like it was necessarily pulling from any one thing per se. No. Just the but overall will, aesthetic. Yeah, and I and I you know the stuff that I'm that I'm into with anime. I know I've went at, at very long you know winded fucking rants about the shit. But very plain and simple, I want Scarsgard to play a live action version of Guts from Berserk. 
He's perfect. This movie, like, he's my fan casting for guts if Berserk ever got, like, a big budget Hollywood production. Right. So here's some interesting asides real quick. So the writer director, one of the writers director, um, he's from Germany and he directed a TV series uh, and a couple of shorts. This is his first full length feature, which hats off on that. Oh yeah. Uh, and the, one of the other writers, Tyler Burton Smith, was the writer for um, the 2019 Child's Play, also worked on Alan Wake 2, uh, the video game, Quantum Break, the video game, Sleeping Dogs, but is currently writing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin adaptation. Okay. So, I mean... Yeah. I mean, this the, the style of this movie, I mean, is the director going to be involved? Because, like... The the way this movie was shot, like I could totally I could I could like I now that I'm thinking about it and I just said it, I can actually get a feel for that with through this movie's like Yeah. Just the aesthetic, the the way everything just the, the vibe of the movie itself. Like I could see it instead of cashing in with some of the comedic stuff from the narration, it could totally like tone down be gritty and dark and have the same almost kind of colorful pop that this movie had yeah yeah um on the last ronin there's no uh director announced as of right now tyler burton smith and tom waltz is currently working on the script and tom waltz uh wrote the uh, a couple video games, Silent Hill Downpour, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014 video game, Mutants in Mayhem, or no, Mutants in Manhattan 2016 video game. So, very familiar with the Turtles lore. Um, Working not, with... uh, not to steer too far from movies, but have, you know, we grew up playing the old school Nintendo Ninja Turtle games. Um, with those newer or ones like that obviously with exception to the movie inspired games because i'm sure they're out there but like t like turtles in manhattan and whatnot have you ever have, have you have you, either of you um tinkered with any of the newer turtles games no i've been wanting to play shredder's revenge which is a Same. throwback to you know turtles in time i just haven't got around to it yet or Herp. yeah what about the drone footage for some of these action footage for some of these action scenes? I like mean, the way the like, whatever award goes to. Yeah, right. Uh, when, drone. Are, when are we getting a drone category in, in at the academy? You know what I'm it saying? It deserves one. <laughs> yeah, for Probably sure. Wild ass <laughs> drone shots. Yeah, when, whenever they're actually doing the culling and it's the snow area, like the way that thing's just floating around, you just yeah, it's almost got the it's it's. I wonder who saw whose footage first. Did Ryan Reynolds catch any footage from this movie when they were filming it? Or did this movie see some of Deadpool's footage and did it? Because mm. they, well, like, you know how there were shots in the Deadpool movie where it was 100% a drone doing crazy shit, you know? Well, that's just yeah. a thing on film sets now. Like, yeah. They're using drones. Oh, and it's a new, a new it's innovation. It's cheaper. Yeah, I mean yeah. you I mean, can't uh, you can't even accomplish some of those shots without using something like that. Like, didn't yeah. uh, didn't didn't Michael Bay um, like pretty much sell sell a whole movie on the idea that he did he used drones to do the cameras and stuff? Wasn't it that ambulance movie with Gyllenhaal? Probably. Yeah, probably. Who who knows though? You know. Um. But yeah, I not only is the the drone work phenomenal. But this movie, and this is what I was worried about from start, like whenever I first started watching it was, are they going to do the typical, let's cut 16 times before one punch lands. And thank God that they had enough sense to not do that terrible thing. You know what I mean? Well, they had well, the, shows... some decent fighters. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of time they, well, they have to cut because the fighting's so shitty that they have to... Piece yeah, a bunch of it together. it together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I felt I felt pretty locked in with the fight 
the fight choreography just because like we had homeboy from the raid too like he was a shaman yeah did you um, notice the 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 throwback that they gave the raid to no i did not i uh, what, what what part was it so at the end of this movie it was just like the end of the raid where you know in the raid him and his brother team up to fight the guy and at the end oh, of this movie oh you're right and, yeah duh yeah. <laughs> and a lot of the same choreography from the raid was used in this movie well this throwback. guy when when this dude fights he is always going to do that handstand like the one arm like kick like yeah like he'll prop himself up on one arm feet in the air like he does that in all of his fight stuff i mean i, I can't mean, it doesn't do get that. I mean, it doesn't get old. It doesn't That's get old. It's probably part but... of the style of fight that he's doing. Yeah. Since he always yeah. does that. Like, But if I could do that, I would be doing that on I the would rage. whip everybody's ass. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh, as soon yeah. as someone bothered me in public, I'd be like, Woof, do the fucking thing. Like, <laughs> kick them in the head. Like, get your weight up, boy. Anybody else want some? <laughs> yeah. This line at Taco Bell better get a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? That would be amazing. And uh, Charlotte Copley showed up oh, long enough to die like he always does. <laughs> he was amazing. Dude, this dude has charisma for yeah. days. Like Oozing out of him. Yes. Him showing well, he does up. A good, he always does a good job of not outstaying his welcome on screen. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's always a pleasant surprise when he shows up in anything. And like he shows up long enough to steal the movie and then leaves. Oh, and then <laughs> like, you you, know, they drop a vice on his head and you see all of his charisma oozing out on the concrete floor. Yeah, you know? For real, right? Yeah. Like, oh, what the fuck's the problem? <laughs> yeah. Someone goes, dude, you do have charisma for days. <laughs> but uh Famke Jansen. Uh um, oh yeah. She still psycho, looks... psycho. Waiting for her to go full Phoenix in that theater, man. Almost dude, did, I guess. She looks exactly the same as she did in X Men. As an aged, like what is she, she you doing? You like the Golden Eye. Yeah, yeah she looks the yeah. same. Like she's drinking baby blood. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> she's something. locked in. <laughs> yeah, Sacking she's chickens definitely... in her closet. You know. Um, but one part that I thought was funny was um, whenever he's when he first meets that guy, it's like. All right, I, uh, I, you know, I fight the dude and he does cart stuff, you know, and they finally yeah. get back to the hideout and they get What's the resist, and then you're like, and then the dude's like, it's just me. Oh, uh, well, family killed everybody else. <laughs> it's just us. He couldn't read the dude's lips. Yeah, that he was shit mumbles, was like, hilarious. Yeah. He was like, well, well, pin her down on the ball game. Yeah. He's like, well, 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 well. Pretty sure he didn't say, let's take a goat and put it in a lawn chair, but, uh, yeah. I was going <laughs> to shake my head like I know what's going on. Yeah, and then when they get to the big reveal where they, it's like the pirate comes up there and he's like, "Me timbers," knocking the person yeah. off the boat, like yeah. pineapple. Dude. Oh, so funny. over the top, yeah. Um, but, one 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 thing in the rotten that I wasn't expecting, and I, I was like, "That's cool that they did that." Was okay. So in these kind of action movies where it's almost almost kind of tower of deathish, where all right, one fight. Pr- leads to the next more difficult adversarial fight, you know? Mm. Um there's a there was a like I wasn't expecting the brother who did the speech writing. Yeah. I was not expecting him to literally huh. betray, be like, I know what they fucking do, man. Like yeah, he's tired right. of torturing people. Yeah, he was like, dude, we like they this killed all old. their rivals. Like, she's still looking we for ran, that guy, like Yeah. We ran out of pro- political rivals years ago like and i also enjoyed that this it t- the, the world that this movie takes place in they never tell you a year they never tell you a location and they never tell you like what like you know what i mean definitely yeah. southeast asia or yeah like but it was was he I, but, the brother-in-law point, or was uh what the fuck's an eviction i was was he the brother-in-law one of them was a brother-in-law. Well, it the was Copley. Yeah. Okay. Because brother and sister. So was... that's why he was pissed. He's tired of his sister's shit, man. Like, yeah. 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 
He's like, man, he was I like, I'm fucking done. But yeah, I like how they 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 left it super open ended and they didn't delve. I, I'm I'm glad that they didn't really delve too deep into the the political side of every because they could have easily tried to turn this into a whole political. Well, the, the commentary thing. was there, but it was super fucking vague. Oh yeah, vague enough to where you could brush past it, and not even think twice about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, to add to your saying about uh, the way they left it at the end, I, I, I kind of I like that as well because, sure, if it has the the following and it can get a sequel, I'll I'll give it a shot. But this is a perfect one and done action film. Yeah. Um, it's one of those movies where you hope it gets a sequel, but it never does because it would almost take the piss out of speculation of whatever yeah. you, you know, whatever kind of cool ideas you could come up with. Yeah. Well, like if, it's one of those, it's a good if, movie to chew on when you're just throwing in all these other action films and, you know, an action movie discussion, you know? Yeah. I think that if they do, if they do decide to sequelize this, it has to be something like where the brother and sister get picked up and move to a completely different part of the world and they're thrown into some shit that they don't, you know what I'm saying? Like they're thrown yeah. into something that they don't, that way it completely removes them from the original environment, the original world that yeah. they, they did. Like it definitely does not need the John Wick treatment. No, no, not at all. Cause, cause kind of the, the, like just the vagueness of everything of the world building. I feel like once we, once you start dissecting like, oh, there's this other faction. There's just, that's what all these sequels yeah. that have really, really strong, like first chapters to their story. The second movie, the vibe just almost flips. Yes. And, you know, you've always got that 50, 50, you know, thing where it works. Like in the case of John Wick, it did work, but there, I feel like that's, that's also kind of up there in that lightning in the bottle category. Like can that type of, thing happen again so soon right no I, I agree i think it just needs to be one and done and not worry too much about trying to build now if they decided to take it in a different type of media like if they decided to actually make an anime out of this with the you know with the same idea oh same yeah like a cross medium thing with it, like with like as we talked about with the video game earlier, like you yeah, were talking yeah. now with like an anime or hell even a graphic novel. I feel like that's a, 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 obviously fair game. Any kind of spin off, any kind of like, you know, little like. I don't want to cheapen how cool the movie is, but like for instance, you know how, like say The Office. I'm gonna use it as a very weird ass pulled example here, but like The <laughs> Office. While there's no sequel to that story of of Dunder Mifflin, you go out to like Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, whatever. You find all this shit that just cashes in on established. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're about well, to like, do. Uh, Australia's going to do an office. Ooh! Oh, for Pretty real? Soon. Yep. Like a like a fresh from the ground up, not just a redub syndication or something. Yeah, like a it's their version of the office. Is it? That's, please tell me, the guy from Wilfred. No, nah, it's gonna, <laughs> not. But he could he could be the the Dwight character. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there it is. Right, stay, staved and still the ma might. Right, let's see what we got. Here. Hannah Howard is the managing director of Finley Craddock. When she gets news that her branch will be shut down to work remotely. She goes into survival mode, making promises she can't keep in order to keep her work family together. Hmm. One of the creators worked on uh, what we do in the shadows, twenty fourteen. Um, uh, the okay. new time bandits, which is good. So, um, so does Gervais have any of his hands in this? I'm sure he'll get paid, but it'll be uh, just more like a creative licensing. Yeah. He gotcha. sold it. That would be funny if he shows up and it's like a kind of a play on Australian and British accents. 
But you know, they have one, like if you scroll down, I don't even know what parts of the world this is, but they're everywhere. All right. Israel has an office. Yeah. I'll say that. Uh, I like that. Like, like it's, it's a show just it's, tailor it's made own, to that culture yeah. and country. That's dude, awesome, I bet that dude. shit's hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. I bet there's so I much that fly over our heads. I'd like to watch that one. Oh, <laughs> they're in like a very small room, but they're still like the audio is still booming like one of those big like trailers that we watch where they're really up in the mic, and it's you know. So there was an Israeli one that got thirty episodes, and then I think this one is. Is from India, right? But yeah, Australia in the office. Yep, gonna be good. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Boy Kills World was. It was very. It was exactly what you wanted when you watched the trailer, but it was very unexpected, uh, as far as like. I was expecting it to 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 not really capture the same feeling that the trailer the the movie trailer did. Yeah. But it did a great job at like keeping that same momentum through the yeah. whole thing. There's no downtime. Um you're in it from the get-go. You're in yeah. you're in it. It's straight nutmeg, man. Like it's just enough of what you need to know it's there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And this is definitely something, like you said, throw on. Like if you want a, a John Wick, you know, a more, even more stylized John Wick experience in an hour and a half and not have to worry about watching four movies worth of shit, it, this is perfect. Well, it's like this would be another movie I would throw at somebody if they came back and was like, hey man, I just watched this movie called Guns Akimbo with a dude from Harry Potter and he has these guns slatted to his hands and he's, oh, I'm like, all right, well, if you like that, give this one a go now. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of that level. It was a silly ghost time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's wild that it only has a 6.4 on IMDb. Well, it seems very under the it radar. It didn't do well in a the theater. Yeah, Wasn't it only like three million? It it was something real low, box office three million. Yeah. So that's you know I mean when did it come out? What was it up against? Yeah. It didn't have a lot of promotion. No, and I mean really, real. really these heavily choreographed like martial arts style beat 'em up movies. If it don't have the Star Wars or Marvel brand slapped on it, like it's kind of like. Those type of action films are our westerns right now. Yeah. And it's going to take it's going to take just word of mouth to, like these like it's it's the kind of film I see could develop a cult following. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, I don't know necessarily if this movie per se would have enough carry to warrant that, but mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like in the action movie spectrum, like if you're someone that's like, all right, tonight we're going to watch just a bunch of real, like you said, stylish action stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, you throw this movie on, you throw on Guns Akimbo, you throw on, um, uh, you know, shuffle through Guy Ritchie and add one to the mix. Like you, it'd be a good little playlist that you can kind of ebb and flow throughout the night and have a really good action movie night. Yeah. It'll do well. In good streaming. run time. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I uh, I couldn't agree more. I think streaming's gonna gonna do wonders for it. Uh, yeah, this movie I... also this movie gives me more faith in Skarsgård as the crow. Did it do the same for y'all? Yep. I actually said that last night. I think. It yeah. Was. I was like, I think yeah. he's gonna do a better job as the crow. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know. There's skepticism with the crow because it's it's the crow and even the original movie. Like when you take off the rose tinted glasses, the crow really wasn't that much of a movie. I know a lot of people would probably clutch their pearls, especially a lot of people in the goth culture. I guess I don't know, but 
Mm. Like the movie wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like this revolutionary film that dropped, but it was good. Yeah. So I, I feel like once you take that away and we go into the Skarsgård Crow, you know, I feel like it's going to, if it keeps any kind of level of him on a acting level to this film, very silent, very serious. Yeah, we had Benjamin doing the, you know, bringing the comedic relief. But as far as Skarsgård's visual appearance, fighting, all that, man, I think the crow's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I agree. At least of the same caliber. Yeah. And dude, speaking of Skarsgård, this motherfucker is like Play-Doh. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was waiting for that eye to fucking sag at some point, man. I was going to be like, ugh. Like, like he, he does, like, well, like, you know, to call back to anime, you know how there's always that moment in the anime fight scene where the dude gets a punch to the face like the villain or whatever, but it didn't really do much, but it drew some blood, and he's kind of doing that smirk, like, oh, is that all you got? You know, that type of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I was waiting for that at some point, but we see the fucking Pennywise dead eye kick in. Like, oh shit, he's noped the fuck out. He's about to fucking fist pistol him into nothing. Well, he did the crazy eyes. When? At one, whenever dude was blowing the smoke in his face and he started, it's when his teeth fell out and they started walking around. I didn't even, I didn't, man, there's so many little things I didn't notice in this movie. Yeah, he did to, the to try to have such a such a loaded review for it. I guess like it's kind of a a paradox with me right now. But that's that's crazy. I'll have to. I mean, warrants a rewatch. Then you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, Skarsgård is like Play Doh. You put him in something serious, he acts his ass off. He knocks it out of the park. You put him as a, a silent action star. Axe his ass off, knocks it out of the park. You put him as one of the most iconic villains, horror villains, knocks it out of the park. Like, he is Play-Doh. Like, he can literally form to whatever he needs to form to. He is the best Skarsgård. I was about to say, I and think I mean, he might be the best one in the family. <laughs> yes. And if our Kevin Bacon sizzling right, he was in Chapter 4 of uh, John Wick. Yes. I mean, and he played a... He played a he played, you know, to add to the, the Plato metaphor here, like, you know, make him a menacing, love-to-hate villain, and he nails it. Yep. So, yeah. I, anything he's in, I'm down to watch. Because it's he puts a clinic on. And for him to be able to, to emote the way that the facting, well, not saying it, anything. Yeah, dude didn't say a word. I like that. Uh, I like that with a movie like this that clearly was obviously not going to be aimed for mainstream success. Mm -hmm. Credit to him and to the, the cast at large for 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 not phoning it in. I didn't feel like any of the bigger names or other faces that I I remember from other movies and stuff. None of them really. It it didn't feel like anyone was there for a paycheck. You know. No. I mean. Maybe Maybe Famke Jansen, because she's in it for all like five minutes, or maybe not even five minutes. She probably has like three minutes of screen time, but that's different, you know? She's the hidey hole villain. Oh, well, you, you never get a lot of face minutes. time when you're that. Yeah. Yeah. Three it's minutes and there. a fucking trigger in front of a bunch of people, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I'm giving it a full star. Full star. Loved it. Enjoyed it. Watching it again. I'm giving it a full star, so you know what that means, guys? It, it gets, gets the coveted. coveted. <laughs> Golden fist pistol. The I fistle? mean, that's... Yeah, the pistol, dude. That's all that it can be. <laughs> Great movie. That's funny. I want a pistol in real life. I don't know if it would work right. It'd probably blow your hand yeah. off, but... I mean, I know... I know I know box office would like to have a word with me on this, but I'll, I'll just have to throw it out there. If someone wants to watch an action film with a lot of blood, guts, gore and fighting and Deadpool and Marvel's not your thing. This is, this would be a, a, a good substitute. 
This is the low carb version. Yeah. The zero. <laughs> it's the Bud Light. <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude got straight MK Ultra at the beginning of this fucking movie, man. Yeah. And I like that it still had the classic, the real bad guy was around him all along. Yeah, right. Even though he was, but really, no one was in the wrong here. Because he, because the kid was suffering sins of the father. Mm hmm. Like, he didn't really do anything wrong. His parents were fucking batshit well, yeah, crazy. Yeah, was... he's like, damn, we're the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not even really him as the bad guy. And the shaman had every right to do what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, granted, it was fucking crazy the plan he hatched, but I mean, it was effective right till the very end. I was like, whenever I started kind of having that what the fuck was whenever he's in the elevator, holds up the drawing, she's like, oh shit, cut the feed. And then they're like, yeah, she'll have a word with you. And there's like 10 people and they're all armed to the teeth. Like, because when the door opens, I'm like, dude, they're just going to gun him down. Yeah. Like I was expecting a moment where they're going to like, you know, the, the classic, like the the elevator door stops and before it even opens the people waiting on it just start lighting the door up like that didn't even you know and, and like it opens and like oh there's no one why because he was on the ceiling fucking ass kicking commence you know yeah great movie great great film <laughs> to, I don't know to, ec to echo dirt lord man Silly goose time. Super silly. But we got a little bit of movie news here real quick. We can get into. Wait. Does Penguin come out this week? I think it does, right? Was it the 22nd? Penguin. September the 8th. Oh, okay. Still a month away, we... but man, it, it's closer than it was, and I'm I'm still hopped. Yeah, I thought it was coming out sooner than that. I just want Internet there to be lied. a I just want there to be like a clip at some point in this show where Penguin has a like a Tommy gun. And he's just spraying and laughing and screaming like angels with dirty faces from Home Alone, where he's just like, ah, you know, just, and like you could take that and just meme the fuck out of it. Right. But yeah, first up here, another 80s icon is getting a music biopic. So the modern obsession with the 1980s and the love of biopics, and particularly biopics about musicians collides in this latest project from TriStar Pictures. As revealed by Deadline, the next music icon getting the biopic treatment is 80s icon Boy George. Um, it says the announcement reveals that J.C. Lee is set to write the screenplay for TriStar Pictures project. Uh, on television, he, is, he has credits which include ABC's How to Get Away with Murder, Apple's The Morning Show, and HBO's Looking in... Looking and Girl. He also has extensive experience in theater and has recently worked on To My Girls, Rel Relevance, and Warplay. His next project, aside from Boy George, is Hulu's Bad Genius adaptation releasing this fall. Uh, it's going to be produced by Academy Award winning producer Kathy Shulman, who previously, whose previous credits include Crash, Dark Places, The Edge of Seventeen, the Woman King, and most recently, Amazon's The Idea of You. Boy George's manager, Paul Kimsley, Jeremy M. Rosen, and Kevin King Templeton are also set to produce with Primary Wave Music serving as well. George himself will serve as an executive producer. Based on George's biographies, Take It Like a Man, Straight, and Karma, the movie will focus on George's success in uh, Culture Club and his own solo music. George rose to fame as lead singer in the iconic band. We know who Boy George is. However, Boy George is not without controversy, with the musician being convicted in 2007 of the assault and false imprisonment of uh, Alden Carlson, 
Carlson. Uh, he also suffered with heroin addiction for years, with Culture Club ultimately disbanding due to Boy George's personal struggles, a wrongful death lawsuit, and a secret romance, all of which make the story prime for the big screen. So what do you guys think about Boy I mean, George Bob? Are you a rock star if you're not addicted to heroin at least once, you know? Exactly. That comes no. with the the kid. Yeah. I mean, I do remember when he was in the news for kidnapping the dude. Yeah. They, like, tied this dude up and was burning him with a crack pipe and stuff. Like, it got weird. <laughs> I mean, shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean. It's like, they were doing I, what? And he, and he was all like, well, he, well, he was in on it. And it's like, mm, <laughs> Was he, though? <laughs> he tied the guy up. Hey, NSA, patch me over to Hollywood. If you're hearing this, if it's not called Chameleon, a Boy George story, lost opportunity. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'd be interested in checking this. Because, I mean, I don't know a lot, a lot. You know, I haven't done the Boy George deep dive. You know what I'm saying? I haven't gone I mean, it comes deep. and goes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... But this this will be a fun good time. I hope he was on a podcast not too long ago, and I listened to it because it was one of the. I can't remember who it was though. Anyway, but I'd, I'd uh, be so interested in seeing it. Yeah. So his other plan biopics include Sam Mendes four separate Beatles movies. Selena Gomez starring as Linda Ronstadt, as well as movies centered on the lives of Britney Spears, Carol King, Bruce Springsteen, Nat King Cole, and Fred Astaire. Ah, it was Bill Maher's podcast. Oh. I bet that was an interesting it was. conversation with those two together. It was. Four separate Beatles movies focusing on each Beatle, a biopic for each one. Imagine. So do they do <laughs> one like where it's like about the band, you know? Yeah. In their young years. And then they do the ones where they separate. It's like, there's going to be a lot of recycled footage in each of those movies. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Jackson as well. Like, well, I'll get around to it then, you know? <laughs> yeah. So Rango, you're going to come in and get behind the drum kit. He's got all, all the right. footage already. Dude, yeah. those YouTube videos with Ringo stars, like, Stop asking for autographs. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> People will send him letters and ask for autographs. He's like, stop sending. I'm not sending them back anymore. Begging He's people, done. please. He's saturated the market, man. <laughs> yeah. It's worthless. He's like, it's my birthday. I'm celebrating. I'm not doing any more autographs. <laughs> it's just me. His oh. Yeah, it was his birthday message. <laughs> It's on his YouTube channel. I was like, what? Ringo Starr pleads with the public, please. Stop sending me letters. Yeah. Oh I will not, God. I will throw them away. I'm not sending them back anymore. <laughs> so he'd been doing that, like That's signing crazy. shit for people. I actually saw an autograph story. It reminds me of this guy sent a dude from Apple that passed away. Steve Jobs no. sent him a letter and asked for his autograph. And Steve Jobs sent him back this letter that was like typed up where he was like, I don't do autographs. I'm sorry. I was flattered by your letter. You know, thank you. Sincerely, Steve Jobs signed it. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's but like, you oh, did. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Clever. Clever girl. No, you know? not anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I got to watch that video yeah. when I get through. That's fucking hilarious. Oh. So next up here, 28 Years Later Trilogy gets surprising update. So the fate of Danny Bull's 28 Days series has been given a surprising update by producer Andrew McDonald. Uh, Bull directed Cillian Murphy in 2002's 28 Days Later, in which the Irish actor played Jim, a bicycle courier who wakes up from a coma only to find that his beloved London had been ravaged by out-of-control citizens infected with the rage virus. Sequel 28 uh, Weeks Later followed in 2007, and while that film featured an entirely new cast, uh, Bull, McDonald, Murphy, and original writer Alex Garland will, be, will all be returning for 28 years later, which is slated for release in 2025. 
Garland and McDonald were on hand at the Edinburgh uh, International Film Festival on August the 18th to discuss their working relationship over the years as the duo have teamed up on a number of projects, including Ex Machina and Civil War. The conversation inevitably turned to 28 years later, and it was then that McDonald gave a surprising update on the movie, saying that filming had officially wrapped and that he and Bull were moving right into production on its sequel. Check out the comments below. We're making hopefully three more 28 films, with the first one called 28 Years Later that Alex has written and Danny has directed and has finished shooting. Then we're just about to start, tomorrow morning actually, part two. And then we hope there's going to be a third part and it's a trilogy. While nothing has been officially announced, paperwork filed with the United States Copyright Office seemingly points to the sequel's title being 28 Years Later Part 2, The Bone Temple, meaning that unlike previous films which have experienced a large time jump, the follow-up to 28 Years Later will instead be a direct continuation. Bull will step aside for the second outing, passing directorial duties to Candyman and the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta. Uh, as for the third film, McDonald's comments point to nothing being set in stone just yet for the franchise, but he remains hopeful that the planned trilogy will eventually come to fruition. And I think it will. Um... 28 Years Later boasts an all-star cast, so while we already know that Murphy will be returning to reprise his role of Jim from the first movie, 28 Years Later also tapped a number of other notable actors to make first-time appearances in the series. These include Jodie Comer, Aaron, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Ralph... How did we say? Finesse? Fines? Ralph Fines? That's it, right? Ray Fines. Ralph Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Ralph... Finesse. Uh, plot details for the movie remain under wraps for now, but executive producer Tom Rothman, or Rothman is already teasing that Murphy's character will be back in an unexpected way. I mean, I'm glad that it's going to get its third movie. Well, I and mean, it's wrapped. It... Yeah. Like that tweet where it's like, we've wrapped filming. It's like, what? I didn't yeah, know you done. were filming. Yeah, because they were talking That's about it. Cool. It's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. That's how you fucking do it. Mm -hmm. You get it done. Like, um, yeah. Uh, in case you know, I feel like it's once again worth worth mention mentioning. If uh, you know, with twenty eight days later being not printed in Blu Ray or DVD, or no, it's on DVD. It's not getting a Blu Ray, and it's not. I mean, it's out of print. So, whatever copies y'all have of it, you know. Oh, yeah. I've got Hold it. Hold on. I think that it would be fun to, whenever 28 Years Later dropped, to go back and revisit. Because I haven't watched either one of the 28 movies in... It's been a very long time. 20 years? Yeah, yeah. dude. It's... it's since I remember they were, um, since they came out. Like Yeah. Yeah, because I remember... Um, I can't remember if it was prior or or after the release of Sunshine, but that early streak of uh, Cillian Murphy films. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, you know, when I was younger, I would alternate between 28 Days from Time to Time as well as uh, Sunshine, because, I mean, you know, they're, they're both excellent movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I, I watched 28 Days Later quite a bit whenever it first dropped. And then, because, uh, you know, it was around Dawn of the Dead. You know, that whole mm -hmm. resurgence of zombie culture kind of came out. Yeah, well, it's um, like about, about time they made them run, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, and then like, I, I didn't know I needed that level of anxiety in my life watching a movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, 28 Weeks Later, I watched it like once or twice, which, you know, I enjoyed it for what it was, but like... It didn't. I feel like this will make that returns. one better and worth watching again as well, you the, know, the, the stepping stone movie now. When this movie comes out, if you think that studio is not going to drop a Blu ray with all three of them, you're crazy. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, oh, oh, they yeah, will. That's going to be, I mean, that'll I'll be a cash cow be for them. Like, special edition's yeah. got them all on Blu ray, you know, 4K prints. Mm -hmm. In a running Blu ray. 
and it's like you know it, it and dude i can even see the marketing now too it's like includes the recently out of yeah. print 28 days later you know you put all three yeah. movies on one disc yeah. i'm not <laughs> doing it <laughs> you have a 28 28 hour marathon but yeah that's um that's gonna be interesting i may try to pop over to the old theater to check that out because you know Dude. it's about you yep. need to watch the Peaky Blinders. I know. It's on my list. You need to get it up there. Because you've been in the like, mood. You know, you've been getting shit watched. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, if you start it, it'll it'll fucking, you'll breeze through it. Yeah. Well, see, we started it, and Marina was like, this isn't for me. But now, since I'm going to have some time away, I'll be able to, like, Finally catch up on a little Dicky or yeah. Dicky, you know, watch some stuff that she's not into, and that's definitely gonna be one you know, of them that I'm gonna Dickie, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know. I feel like I, I feel like at one point we're gonna start an episode and Adam's gonna go, by order, and Griffin's gonna go, Oh, the peaky blinders. Yeah, the fucking peaky blinders. <laughs> and you're both gonna shit on me for having not finished it. <laughs> I wish I could nah. watch it again. That's how good it was. Like I'm, I'm jealous of people that can go watch that without, you know, having seen it. Like, yeah, well, this it's that good. The vibe, and it's well, Celia Murphy, dude. He's just so fucking good. Like, well, there's got to be something good to it, man. Because I haven't, I haven't seen you be. On. Whenever, whenever you were in the in the binge for this show. Well, it had been a while since right, I had right. something to binge like that, like Boardwalk Empire or Breaking Bad. That's what or, I was going to say. Yeah, That's you get in that, say. oh, it's good. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, I haven't heard your show hop. Like, play another one. Show. I could have just kept playing them. <laughs> since, yeah, since that, that, that other one, you know? Like, since uh, Boardwalk. Yeah. Because I remember when Boardwalk Ooh. was coming out years before the pod, you know? And I just remember Adam was always just like, hey, man. You need to watch Boardwalk. I was I watching, watching that as it dropped like, weekly, like yeah. on Sundays. I was like, ah, HBO. Oh, um, yeah. oh man, when, when, uh, when, dude, just uh, what was his name? When he looks at the camera and goes, "I'm done with this shit." But, but yeah, it was, a, it was good. Twenty-eight years later, so. Dropping in 2025, just around the corner. So yeah, I'm excited, and it's gonna make a it's gonna make a decent chunk of change, I think. Yeah, especially now. Um, yeah, I think Celia's people. Big star. Well, and not only that, but like Alice Garland. We, you know, The Walking Dead kind of killed the zombie genre. Oh, mm-hmm. dude! It, I mean, it made it it made it look at the at the flowers, dude. Mm-hmm. So I think people still. <laughs> Still want their their zombie, but they want good, and that's hard to come by. So I think this is it. I think this will pull butts to seats. You know, sure. ass to chest, ass to ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> for for all the good news, you got to have the bad, right, Griff? I mean, it depends on how you look at it. So. Borderlands breaks an embarrassing box office record and uh, devastating second week. So things keep getting worse for Borderlands, which just suffered the worst second week drop of any 2024 release. Borderlands opened in theaters on August the 9th to abysmal reviews, resulting in a 9% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and a terrible D plus cinema score. A uh, word of mouth about the movie quickly spread and the film opened to a meager 8.6 million in its opening weekend, landing in the number four spot at the box office. Things only got worse as the film headed into weekend two. Borderlands plummeted at the box office in its second weekend, grossing just 2.35 million in 3,125 theaters. Screen Rant reported that this is a 72% decline, making it the worst yeah. drop for a wide release movie in 2024, beating out Maxine at 69.1% drop and the bike riders 65.9% drop. Those movies uh, notably cost a fraction of what Borderlands did and the video game adaptation had a worse second weekend drop than other big budget flops this year, such as Madam Web and Argyle. Borderlands currently 
the current box office total is 13 million domestically and only 18 million worldwide. This is terrible news for a movie with a reported budget of at least 110 million, while Borderlands initially could claim it open higher than Harold and the Purple Crayon, the other big flop of August at a 6 million opening weekend. The film had a better second weekend hold as it only dropped 48.9%. Harold and the Purple Crayons, 15 million domestic and 20 million worldwide. Total might not look uh, look much more than Borderlands. Still, the Zachary Levy or Levi led family comedy only had a budget of 40 million. Right now, Borderlands only saving grace is that reportedly nearly 60% of production costs were covered by international pre sales. Also, this second weekend drop does not take into account limited release engagements or special re-releases like Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace, which did have an 83.5% drop in its second weekend following the May 4th holiday. While it might soften the blow financially, the written record on Borderlands for the history books is all bad news. Between the, second, uh, the biggest second weekend drop and landing the worst ever cinema score rating for a video game movie, Borderlands has been dealing with terrible headline after ter- after terrible headline since it came out. While Madame Web and Argyle were the biggest bombs of 2024 in the early part of the year, Borderlands has now spared them from going down in the history books as the most disappointing box office run or critical reaction this year. Unless another high profile movie comes out and takes uh, and just sinks at the box office, Craver, Craven the Hunter is still in play and maybe The Crow. Borderlands seems to have walked away as the biggest bomb of 2024 and an award nobody wants to claim. Also, it doesn't say that. Well, it doesn't say in this article, but they are releasing it in 10 day on stream. 10 day. In 11 uh, team reporter. Yeah. Um, The Rotten Tomatoes score is a 53. The audience score. Right. It's the no. uh, the the people that you know the critic review is ten like and they're normally yeah. the other way around. I don't I just it hasn't had a lot of people go and watch yeah. it like it's so, so all all video game nitpicks aside because I know they're there and all that stuff. Do you think this movie suffered outside of probably bad writing, but just as far as the aesthetic? Do you think it? suffered because of films like Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. I think it suffered because all of the reviews that I've seen, like on TikTok and stuff, are diehard Borderlands fans. And first of all, a lot of people don't know, a lot of moviegoers probably don't know what Borderlands is. They don't. Is. There's, there's a lot that do. This but ain't Guardians. Yes. You know? Um, there and wasn't a lot Deadpool of... Deadpool was in the theater. Yeah, Deadpool was in the theater. There oh, wasn't yeah. a lot of promotion. That was the sponge, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this has Kevin Hart in it. Oh, he I've seen clips does... from it, dude. It's it's a comedy. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and Kevin Hart will be the first one to line up at the, you know, whatever place to do interviews about whatever movie he's in. And you don't really see him talking about this a lot. At least I haven't. So it's like, how do you get people that aren't familiar with Borderlands to even be interested in watching the movie? The only one I saw was Jack Black. He did some podcast. Yeah. He was on Bad Friends. and Yeah. There was some stuff around him at the time because of the cancellation of their tour, but I don't think that affected the movie. Like, no, 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 I don't you know, think so. Mm-mm. so they just announced today that Borderlands 4 is coming out. Yes, the video I saw game, that at game yeah. Gamescom, yeah. So, and you know, they timed this movie release around the time of that, and they're gonna be like, fuck, man. But I think when it hits streaming, I think it'll do a lot better. I don't think I'm gonna hate it. Yeah, well, I have. I don't, I, think I don't really. Hate it. I'm not a. I'm not enough of a fan yeah. of the games. They can't to, let me to down. Feel like I, I can. Yeah, like I don't have that that level of expectation. Well, that and a lot you of can't expect a fucking movie to be just like the game. Like you can't. No. Yeah. What what movie I is? Just, I mean, it kind of. I feel like it's exactly what the trailer shows. It's a lot of just 
quirky one-liners, silly environments, lots of explosions, silly goose time. Yeah. But I mean, dude, some of the like like Griffin was stating earlier, some of these reviews are fucking brutal. Yeah. Some of them are. Like when you go look and read the reviews, some of them are like, I enjoyed the movie. I mean, you know, aside yeah, from what other it's... people are saying, it was it was funny. It was right. You can't I, compete I... with Deadpool. That was dumb yeah, to even that's... put this yeah. out when that movie because it's still in the theaters, I think. Yeah. Dude, people are going back and watching that again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Instead of this, because they're like, I'll watch that when it goes to streaming because it won't be long. (laughs) Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening. I don't, yeah, I don't get it. They they could have pushed it back by what? Two, three weeks, a month? Something. But they wanted to time it for the release of the announcement of the game. Yeah. And it's like, well, fucking push that back. I mean, that don't come out until 2025, so. I mean, for all we know, the for the movie's merits, it could just be just another one of those crazy, stylish, almost comedic, kind of like Boys Kills World, but with five fucking people instead like of that one. That didn't do know? well. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see it, you know, when it comes to streaming, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see, and we can have a more in-depth discussion when we when we do it on the pod of, like, where did they go wrong? What could they have done better as far as like marketing and possibly even how the movie actually is, you know? So, well, I mean, can we, can we just from the thumbnail for the article that we're looking at on our end here, can we just take a minute to say that like kudos and props to the makeup department? Like, don't get me wrong. They already had probably good material to work with. Cause I mean, she's not a, I mean, she's a very attractive woman, but making Kate Blanchett look Definitely as made young her as look she younger. does. Yeah. Yeah. Like, isn't she in her fifties? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, so. not that that's a, not that that's a 55. bad thing by any stretch. I mean, that does not look like a 55 year old woman. Well, well baby blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, I'm excited to watch it just to kind of get a general idea of like what all the hype or lack of hype is actually about. So Star Wars new movie cuts a major Mandalorian season two plot and beloved character. Uh, So Mandalorian and Grogu will continue the storyline across the popular Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian, but it looks like one fan favorite character will not be returning. So Mandalorian and Grogu Star Wars return to the big screen uh, set to open in theaters seven years after the release of the last film in the franchise, The Rise of Skywalker. Even though Star Wars has been absent from the big screen, it has been thriving on Disney Plus. Uh, uh, thriving is a very strong word. We will fucking get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in an era which began with The Mandalorian in November 2019 and led to spinoff series like Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and the upcoming Skeleton Crew. <clears throat> During the Chicago Fan Expo via Screen Rat, actor Tamora Morrison confirmed he won't be appearing in The Mandalorian and Grogu. Morrison originally played Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones and has since appeared as all clone characters that derive from uh, Jango Fett in live action from the clone troopers and revenge of the Sith to Boba Fett and both the Mandalorian and the book of Boba Fett speaking during the Chicago fan expo panel from clone troopers to bounty hunters, Morrison revealed that he will not be in Mandalorian and Grogu and also hinted that Disney and Lucasfilm have not reached out to him about reprising his role for the book of Boba Fett season two. Uh, and and it's interesting here. To me, they don't want to keep it. I mean, they're done with him and the Boba Fett book of Boba. That's done. That's what that means. I mean, the the series just didn't do well. Well, you got to think he's probably going to voice him in any other medium. Oh yeah, he ain't out of a job. Like yeah, he'll always be Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, dude, but, Lucasfilm is keeping him around for well, a there's, reason. There's no sense of putting him in this movie if it's you know if he didn't shouldn't be in it. I mean, it's well, not just to here's have my him. thing: is this movie going to be a retcon? No. Nah, what do you mean? Well, I mean, 
there's literally no, like, just, I know it's just a trailer, but there was literally no indication or no acknowledgement of anything past season two. I don't think they would do that. I mean, the, no. the show was a hit. Yeah. Why would they? Well, yeah. I mean, it's almost like it's almost like the movie is going to make season one branch where we have the rest of the show that tells its story, which is great and good and gold. And then they're going to, because I don't, there's just well, no logical reason. I thought the movie reason. was just a continuation. Oh, no, man. Like, if, if you... Uh, if you see the, if you watch the the teaser they put out, there's they're back in the Razor Crest, like they're they're talking about him just bounty hunting and shit. He's like, hey, I got the kid with me now. I gotta take like the way he ends season one, where he's like, I gotta take jobs, but I gotta kind of pick and choose what I do now. It's all stuff from season one that's in that that's being pulled upon to kind of hype you for Could the movie. Old footage, but like. But like no, but I mean, there's no. I mean, there was no nothing about the dark saber, none of that shit. So it's almost like after season one, the show tells its own story in the show, and this movie is going to be its own. Where did you see a trailer? Uh, I mean, it's not dropped. Oh, but, like on you know, Twitter. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's oh, from okay. the D twenty three Expo. All right, because I was like, I ain't seen no damn trailer online. Oh no, well, there's been no official okay. releases, but any yeah, the 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 you know, kind of like in that clip. Yeah, but where, that was a teaser. The, the, yeah, but even then, you'd have a voiceover with some indication. You know, it, it's kind of like the teaser itself is supposed to kind of kind of stuff though. That no, I, I mean, because... I mean, maybe I'm just overlooking into it. But ne- when it, whenever that teaser from D23 goes to public. Just watch it and just keep that in mind and see if that if that's any kind of like conclusion y'all come to because that's that's exactly what I was like when I'm watching it, I'm like they they've backed the story up a bit they're not restarting it but they've backed it up a little and they're like okay we're starting from this point well it says movie. it says in the article here the Mandalorian and Grogu is an interesting prospect as it seems Disney is foregoing a traditional season four of the show in favor of a big screen blockbuster spectacle. Footage at D23 confirmed the inclusion of Zeb, character who originated in the animated series Star Wars Rebels and made his live-action debut in The Mandalorian Season 3. Scorny Weaver was in talks for a major role in the film, but nothing has been confirmed since. So what it sounds like is, if they're going to be bringing characters into it, how do we link these characters to Mando already knowing them? Oh, let's throw some, some footage of them in the Razor Crest back in season one, season two time frame, going to meet this person as there a could flashback. Be flash, yeah. Yeah. Well, but I mean, it's... most of the, 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 the major consensus is that people are hopped for it. I clearly am too, but I did notice that was a caveat that not only I noticed, but also a lot of comments who they were like, this looks great, but it looks like a retcon's going down. Well, I mean, that's classic internet, like freak out, right? Sure, oh, the, sure. the Razor Crest is back. That means we're erasing everything that ever existed before anything. And it's like, bro, you don't know the context of it. What are we doing? You know what I'm yeah, saying? For like, sure. Yeah, for sure. But but once again, too, like when he's ha- like, are we just going? Is it just going to be a movie where he just picks up a bounty? Him and Grogu go deal with it. It has some sort of profound thing to them and their bonding uh, storyline. And then it's just going to be open for what the fuck ever at the end in case it does well or it bombs. Well, and I mean, I'm okay. I'm down for that. I'm down for it being just like one secular adventure, but it's a hell of, a, of an adventure. Well, like you said, if you want to add new people to the series. Yeah. And like they and were already only... around, you can, you can use a linchpin here to. Yeah. Go and then and... you also got to think, you also got to think too. For the average moviegoer, this might be their first taste of Mando and Grogu. Yeah. They may not have even fucked with the show. I know it's kind of hard to believe. I think it's hard to believe, but it is a possibility. Yeah. But as the article says here, it says, Many are curious about what story is big enough to take the show to the big screen. Yet this is not the only Star Wars film set to be adapted from the Disney Plus series. 
Filoni is set to direct an untitled Star Wars film that will serve as an Avengers-style crossover event film between Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, and Skeleton Crew. With rumors, Which, swirling... I mean, it's very true. I'm, I hate to interrupt, but with that being said, though, it's very true that uh, you know this is supposed to be the movie that's supposed to kind of get Man- Mando up to speed on the Thrawn threat, right? Um. With rumors swirling that it has been a that it will be a loose adaptation of Timoth- Timothy Zahn's *Heir to the Empire* novels, Boba Fett could be a major character in that film, as his presence would certainly help draw in general movie audiences who might not have seen all of the Disney Plus series, but do recognize Boba Fett as a Star Wars legacy character. Well, since they're not going with *Book of Boba Fett*, just hear me out. This is just thinking out loud. If they're not going with *Book of Boba Fett* further or whatever and they're making a they make an ahsoka style film and then the crossover movie that's the new episode 9 10 and 11 right there well they said this is the first star wars film in seven years this will be the first one and it says here it says the best chance is for him to have a role this is of course talking about boba fett but the best chance is for him to have a role in Ahsoka Season 2, setting the stage for Filoni's Star Wars team-up film. So we're going to get Mandalorian Grogu, Ahsoka Season 2, that's going to lead up into Filoni's crossover movie. So Check the writers out on uh, uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu on the IMDb page. Mm-hmm. Writers, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, George Lucas. I think you would say really some of the characters damn. are based on... But it, yeah. but like Grogu's not. Yeah. You know, there's this new stuff that's being added in. So I think uh, Favreau's directing too, right? Yeah, he's doing the directing. So, I mean, yeah, this is just going to be. And yeah. Or technically, well, given the sequel trilogy is the quote end of the Skywalker saga, and they do kill, they had like the Emperor so bad they have to kill him twice. Now that he's finally done for, they can still shift into Air of the Empire, but it's just weird that the timeline's all fucking weird now. Well, the timeline's because weird te- with all these shows. Yeah. That yeah. are supposed to connect. We have to, you know, connect all that, which this show came out first. Mm-hmm. So in the movie, they may have to do some stuff where they go back and show us, like, okay, now we've connected all this. This show, that show. What was the last? No, not the last one. The one before the. Um, um, Ahsoka. Yeah. You got to work yeah. all that in now. I mean, there's a lot yeah. been going on. And we don't know when all this was happening. No. And not only that, but the next news kind of like reaffirms their decisions, though, in a way. Right. So. The Acolyte has been canceled. Dude. And and the what? fandom, the fandom <laughs> reacts loudly. Let, let's. I just want to go through this article for a second. Um, fan reactions to the cancellation on social media has been as mixed as the series itself. Itself. Many fans have expressed disappointment in Lucasfilm and Disney's decision to cancel the Acolyte, noting the potential for where the series could have gone. Yeah. Others were more critical of the series, pointing out the issues with the series' writing and pacing. Some fans were also willing to point out the series' flaws while still hoping it could improve in Season 2. This was a tweet. I enjoyed the Acolyte, but I also get why it isn't being renewed. But I'm still disappointed because this probably just means only more Mandiverse stuff for a while. I just haven't been able to care about any of that stuff in a long time. Haven't kept up with it since Book of Boba Fett, to be honest. But you break for the Acolyte? Get the fuck out of here. The ones who hated it rejoiced, while others noted how the trolls who review-bombed the Acolyte hmm, would feel like they won, which was certainly true. Many people seemed to take pleasure in not only the series cancellation, but even delighted in other fans' disappointment. Eric Goldman writes, I was ultimately pretty frustrated by the Acolyte, and I assume its viewership just didn't justify its cost or it would be back. 
And I also hate that canceling it after one season will make the worst people who are never going to give it a fair shot feel like they won. Listen here, fucking Goldman fuck fuck stick. We watched the whole fucking series. Yeah, it was every fucking trash. It was fucking garbage. We gave it a fair shot. All fucking six episodes. All the dog shit that they spent millions of dollars on to get us a piss poor excuse for a Star Wars story. So I don't want to fucking hear this shit, Goldman, you fuck. Um, yeah. Star <laughs> testify, Griffin, testify. Star Wars has made it abundantly clear that it only wants one type of fan, writes at McCarter Shannon. Uh, Jor Jordan Jordane Seals writes, seems bad to cancel a show because people can't stop being racist about it, but whatever. Also double depressing because my introduction to Amandala as an actor happened while people were being racist about them in The Hunger Games. Mike uh, Klonowski writes, I will say this about the Acolyte. It had some fantastic ideas that were executed terribly. It had the best fight slash lightsaber choreography since the prequels. It sucks for the cast and crew to be out of work. And then here is a reaction to Matt Crowder. And it's a bunch of people celebrating. Here's, here's a, I try. I don't want to give in, but damn it, I have to give, give in, in, dude. These acolyte motherfuckers don't understand the concept of how the lightsaber fights have been played to go with the age of the films. Mm -hmm. In episode one through three, they were jumping, flipping, hovering over lava, doing everything because they were trained fucking Jedi. Trained. The reason why all that shit in the original trilogy was how it was. Obviously, for technical purposes, it was probably more practical to keep it subdued. But now we can look at it as, okay, the lightsaber fights between Vader and Obi-Wan, it's like a samurai fight. Yeah. You don't swing a million fucking swings. You time your strike, your opponent does, and whoever fucking gets the cut gets the cut, dude. Yeah. So they don't fucking understand the, 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 just the chronology and evolution of lightsaber fights throughout the fucking story, which, if we're going to pick at anything, why that? Racist? No, not racist. Shitty acting. Uh, fucking don't like Star Wars bullshit, or real fans, or whatever the fuck that guy said. No, fuck that. What any fandom needs is a real fan, and it's people that are paying the fuck attention to the show and know where it's been and know where it's going to some sort of uncertain speculation. And then we're delivered something that could be vastly different, but it's at least written well. This show was written with fucking pens dipped in shit. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, here's, here's what I will say. Star Wars, Marvel, all of these really big properties are are lucky and they don't realize the, the writers, the, you know, the, the people behind the machine don't realize how lucky they are that they have such a passionate fan base that are, that want to spend money, that want to watch your TV shows, that want to watch your movies, that want to, to go to your theme parks and spend your, their money on what you are bringing to them. You're lucky to have a fan base that dedicated because Star Wars could have been like fucking Borderlands and just release the fucking release the show. It gets no praise, no nothing. And you know, and this, and, and it, a lot of, and from my perspective coming into this, I went into this show. Cause like you said, Griffin, we all, the three of us gave it an honest fucking watch. We acknowledged what was being said, but we still took the time to watch it and take it in ourselves. And most of the shit that, that they're using to have their, Twitter buzzword arguments over wasn't what made the show suck. It was the writing. Yes. It was the shoehorn. Like for the first time in any kind of major IP, I actually got disgusted at some of the shoehorned cameos because they were unnecessary or they were poorly done. Call that cameo like, why, porn. like, why are you going to fucking give us any remote 
sense that Yoda is aware of the situation until the literal goddamn last frame. I think of the they show. added that in. Yeah, I, I really mean, do. I, and you, you're probably you're probably right. Dude. I think they went in there and added it, that, hoping we'll get another season. Why would you? Why would you take one of the most hyped and anticipated on screen reveals of one of the like the the most evil fucking Sith lords? Uh, why would you give him just a bit shit CGI three second cameo of you realizing oh he's watching, but he loves to hug the wall? Like why would you fucking do that? Like what what what? To what end does that even try to give, especially in the fucking season finale? And and don't and and, and it and it doesn't even work as a hey, guess what we're building to? Like there could have been so many points throughout this show where instead of Kamar trying to convince uh May to be like, all right, you you know the you know we just want to unrestricted power blah 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 we just want to be ourselves on this little island of fuck all and instead actually be like you know i'm gonna teach you what my master told me i know how to do things that i'm that i've learned and i'm passing it on to you and actually kind of in like kind of like really showing some of the early origins of the fucking sith because that's what the fuck they are and i don't know why they went for this stupid we're we're not not sisters, but we're not sisters. Bullshit with the witches. Yeah, I mean it was just the the show fucking sucked. I wanted to like it. I went in like trying to like it. I gave this show more of an effort to enjoy than I did Andor and Andor and like the the, the like how, how these two properties exist in the same franchise blows my fucking mind and i'm sure there are a bunch of other more drastic examples but just as far as the disney plus content's concerned what the fuck yeah who the fuck came into work at disney on fentanyl that day you know well i mean it got canceled for a reason and um and uh, the people out there whoever whoever wants to point fingers at whatever they want to point fingers is the fact still remains. People tuned in and watched it. They didn't like what they were getting, and they didn't tune back in again. And this show's writing was the equivalent to someone uh, like writing the header for epi- the first episode, and then drinking their coffee while their cat just walked across the keyboard. Yeah, Here's right. what I would have asked though: when if I'm in the room, and they say to me, "Well, if people were just racist. They didn't like it because I had a woman lead." I'm like. Uh, they have a show called Ahsoka. Yeah. Funny story. Uh, lead is a yeah. black lady. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah. And, and I'm pretty sure that's coming back for another season. I mean, and and that show so, was leaps and bounds better. That's just a sorry ass excuse for some shitty writing. Yep. I'm sick well, of that. That's, that's well, why that's, that's your show's good. getting canceled because you go to you you do that. You're like, well, it's just because of racism. It's like, no, 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 no. Not though. Those those who can can. Those who can't don't fucking try. Yeah. Yeah. I watched every episode of the of a, what was that? Squid Games. That guy was great in it. Yep. Along with everyone else. Good writing. Yep. Not his fault. Same. Not your fault that this is dog shit. You didn't write it. Yeah. You know? And 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 I could have gave I I didn't give a fuck about any of the, the 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 outside politics being brought up. I didn't give a shit about that. I don't give a shit about no. who my lead is. As long as it's writ- written well. This is why you have to give a shout out. You gotta give credit to Daisy Ridley because she did not go out on this kind of campaign. Oh yeah, right. They hate me because I'm a woman. But mm-hmm. there's been tons of women in Star Wars. They just didn't like yep. the movies, you know. Sorry, it was your movie. Sorry, you know. Be mad at the person that wrote it. Yep. I'm, you know, she took the high road there. Yep. And she's coming back. Uh, look at that, you know. Yep. I'm here for it. So yeah, it's you know. I wish I was I wish I could say that I'm surprised that it's getting canceled, but I think we all I 
I will say this. I'm more surprised that it's getting canceled before season two. Cause I thought that like, Oh, there people are just hating on it because of the, the reasons that the article mentioned. And they're like, no, 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 we're going to do a season two. And then season two would come out and be the final nail in the coffin for the series. Yeah. I'm glad somebody over there had the good sense to be like, yeah, people are not happy about this shit. So we're just not even going to attempt to see burning two. money at this point. I mean, how are you going to spend 150 million an episode? 30 when, minutes. When, I think it when was the D plus season. When did, when Disney Plus does their usual roundup of content to get off the platform because it's just taking up space, nobody's watching it, guaranteed Acolyte's probably going to be one of them. Yeah. But they'll eventually just pull it off there so they don't have to pay. Which, They're doing stuff like which, that now. Which, yeah, I remember you bringing it up in an They'll pull episode. shows so they don't have to keep paying and the actors. So... So even, even, even if you're listening and you enjoyed this shit and you think all three of us are fucking wrong, this is the importance that shows like this, that, that have niche audiences, cause that's what it's going to be. And it's no different than, you know, the stuff that the three of us have always agreed on that we know puts us in a niche category, but it stresses the importance of what, of what Adam was saying though, about them being able to pull this stuff offline. This is why you, we have to vow as, as, as consumers of entertainment and consumers of the stuff that we genuinely enjoy and everything, there has to be some sort of petition or some sort of action put in place so that these streaming exclusives eventually get a physical release. Yeah. Because but, if not, if not, you're throwing your money at Disney and they're laughing at your ass cause they can pull it when they want. And you're subscribing for something that you're missing content on there that you don't own none of it. Yeah. But is it such a bad thing if we pretend like the acolyte never existed and Disney pretends like it never existed? Like, I mean, sure. I mean, I hope so, but, but you know, but that's, you know, it's, it's to be absolutely fair for the things that we enjoy. Like that's on here. Like if, if they go the way, of deletion then you know that's obviously going to have us in a titty as well but that's the thing the audience that genuinely liked this show i think is so small because the overwhelming amount of hate that poured on this show and that's the thing a lot of those arguments are based on a small another small equally sized fraction of a fan base that that maybe did say derogatory shit about, you know, race, creed, shape, and size, whatever. But the largest it's always consensus gonna be on, on the internet, you can't get away yeah, from that. Yeah, that that's internet, internet. Yeah. But but when the big vocal majority is really just pointing out that something's just terribly written, you got to admit, you got to just own it to yourself to go, yeah, I enjoyed it, but everybody shit on it. So, yeah. Acolyte fans, I feel your pain. I enjoyed The Flash. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I I get their pain, but at the same time, like, I'm glad the Acolyte's fucking done with and it's not coming back. And maybe that can make room for a show that's based on dark side users that's actually going to be fucking good. Yeah, let's spend yeah. that money on something else. Yeah. But yeah, Acolyte's canceled, and it looks like they are, unfortunately, for, um, who is it? Mr. At Red Cyphers here. Going to be leaning into the Mandoverse for quite a while, because guess what? People enjoy it, and it gets a lot of views. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so. Wait, wait. Wait, where? Where was? How'd you kid? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. All right, so last up here, Scrapped Avengers 5 plans reportedly made this Phase 4 hero the main character. I thought that this was kind of interesting. Uh, so Shang-Chi was reportedly set to be one of the leads in Avengers 5. It has been three years since Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings opened in theaters, and fans are still waiting for Simu Liu, I can never pronounce this guy's name, to return as the character. While the news of a Shang-Chi sequel is slow, 
It appears the character was set to have a significant role in the fifth Avengers movie, previously titled, titled Avengers the Kang Dynasty, before the movie was renamed Avengers Doomsday. In a piece published by Inverse, the web confirmed website confirmed that Shang-Chi would have been one of the main leads in Avengers the Kang Dynasty. Uh, so far, it has not been confirmed by either the studio or the star himself, so is all uh, still considered a rumor at this point. No additional details were provided by the article, but it is likely that uh, Avengers the Kang Dynasty would have paid off uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings mid-credit scene that teased the Ten Rings being a beacon. In theory, this could still apply to Doomsday, with the beacon being connected to Robert Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom rather than Kang the Conqueror. Um, and I thought that this was interesting, and of course it's all pure speculation right now, but they announced Shang-Chi 2, right? I'm not... Well, wasn't this... Well, I mean... Let me, let me tell you all this before we get into all that, because okay. it might change some stuff. RDJ confirmed... Victor Von Doom's version of Doctor Doom confirmed okay. it. So he is not going to be a Tony Stark variant. That's what he said. Now, could he be lying? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's been confirmed, and it's like, okay, well, that's weird. That is yes, weird. You're but, just going to play a different person. But I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess, if someone's going to really like make sure they're not selling snake oil to the fans. I, I feel like that'd be the guy to do it for sure. Right. Like, because if it was something stupid, like well, the dude don't have, to, he's you don't have not going to give away shit. the. You know, yeah. he, why Tater's, would you confirm yeah. that so early on? But I mean, it was all over Twitter I mean, today. It happened. But they are paying him an absurd amount of money to yeah. come back. Yeah. Um. But specifically to the article, though, I remember when there was about that good year of speculation where the ending of of uh. Saying Shang Song Chi, I'm sorry, I'm butchering the name, but uh, when they're when Wong from Doctor Strange is examining the the bangles mm -hmm. or the rings, um, there was that speculation that it was a piece of Kang tech, yeah, and not anymore because <laughs> I, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> But anyway, but yeah, it it he was the stepping stone between, you know, Eternals and you know the build up for Kang. Yeah, but since Eternals is going to be kind of in limbo from this point forward, um, it would make sense if, you know, as a way of testing the ability to travel multiverses, Doom was like, I'm going to send these relics through you know you know what i'm saying like yeah. the, they could easily Some wreck beacons. on that yeah well and I'm it'd wondering, be like these power weapons yeah well i wonder if it's something where uh, maybe i'm just being stupid here but if it's something that miss marvel or not yeah miss marvel or um america chavez could get a hold of like it amplifies their shit I mean, well, her rings yeah, are I mean, the same, kinda, right? Yeah, but what if yeah. these were like a, a more cons like a larger boon to that? Like, well, like, 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 he you had know, more of them. I mean, yeah, she only yeah. had one, so, right? Yeah, well, yeah, she, she I, just was. Well, there there was a pair, the and one? she she got yeah, she got oh, yeah, them she both, got I the think. other one, but it was from somewhere else. But those rings that Shang Chi had, there's like several of them together, you know. Yeah. And so I mean, it would make dude, sense that they'd be stronger the more you have. So, and they look different, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if yeah. these, you put these with those? Whoa. Yeah. God go tear, full, you know? I yeah. mean, he can go full gambit with that shit because that's what he was doing. Yeah. Because it's like, and, and at the same time, it's like, what is the purpose of Kang? You know, what would have been the purpose of him dropping these things all through? the multiverse and through history. Well, I wonder if it was, well, if, it, if they're as old as they are, I'm wondering if it was a way, or maybe it's not even Kang that made them. It's Ram, it's Rama Tut, the Egyptian variant. Mm -hmm. Like what if he, he did it? I, I can't, I mean, 
yeah you know just pure speculation on it but what if he was doing it in his way of going okay if these are here then i'm in this universe well it's also a good way to find some hot spots in the universe like yeah because you see the usage it's like okay some some activity here yeah oh these people don't have to use this shit yeah better something going on so you can almost track down the hot spots yeah yeah so he can prune as Mm -hmm. the threat is deems necessary Mm mm-hmm like I would That'd think he would definitely want to get rid of the little girl. Yeah. Because oh, her yeah. thing where she can, you know, that's just that's something wild being able to just hop into different realities and shit like that. Yeah. Spaghetti one so, is my favorite. And I think that I don't think that they fully scrapped all of the plans for the Kang Dynasty and all nah, that good stuff. Push it back. Well, it's, it's like just getting it's just getting a massive overhaul and on the rework. back burner. Yeah. Well, it's like let's take all the high notes from this script, let's work Doctor Doom into it somehow, and then let's continue forward. Well well because they can't of the nature continue of, without having him back at some point. So Well with I, the with the well with uh, of course and with the nature of NDAs, I would not be surprised if there's already a very, very large chunk of Kang footage that's been made. Oh, and, I'm sure. And I'm yeah, sure well, they, they had would him be, in costume. They probably shot a bunch of that shit. Uh, yeah, and I'm sh- so I feel like there's there's probably going to be some footage worked in to be able to deal with Kang on screen, but be able to properly leave from Jonathan Majors as being, you know. A, have it to where it's like, all right, since Loki sealed shit off, Kang ain't a threat no more. Well, all you got to do is have Doom nuke the the meeting place of all the Kangs. I mean, they're all there. Nuke it. And, and a lot of people have speculated that. They're just expecting like Kang to be mid-plan, about to do his shit, and then Doom just rolls up and goes, the name's Doom, learn it well, and fucking just caps the shit. Because, like, yeah. the only one that the only two that weren't there, right, are dead now. Yeah, they killed them. Well, yeah, Tom, yeah, Tom Lee self sacrificed, and well, the one now, in Ant Man, he's dead. Yeah, well, so well, what was weird is well, every cane we've if, seen has died, except well, for all the came, ones that, that you know, well, the well. We can we can chalk him up to dying by the like the power falling so far like Emperor Palpatine style and, yeah. and Jedi, but if you think about it though, if he fell into one of those type of holes and went through a dimension, technically he should have showed up at the Beyond Zone where Deadpool, Wolverine, and all those fuckers yeah. were for the majority of that movie. That's where Kang should actually be right now from Quantum Mania, but. I mean that it would be a, it would be a lot easier to just say that he fell and died, exploded, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'd like to see Shang Chi. I mean, a lot of people didn't yeah. want to enjoy that movie, but I, like I thought it was great. Yeah. So I'm excited. Oh, dude, to see it was, him it was a good time. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I just like the idea that the that that the mother was able like whenever her and him were fighting in the woods and they were doing all crouching tiger, hidden dragon. And she could take the rings from him and then beat yeah. his ass. And it's like, eh, here, have your fucking toys back. And then at the end, that it kind of goes full circle where the kid gets them. And he's like, yeah, fuck you, dad. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that's all the uh, the movie news. I'm ready for some triggity trailers. Got an honorable mention. They started a pr- production on Moon Knight 2. Fucking like right. they're working on it, you know. So Thank God. Yeah. We will get another Moon Knight. I'm. That's what I'm the most excited yeah. about. Fast track that shit. Yeah, for real. They were right. like, we got a little extra money laying around since we canceled that other show. Uh, yeah. What's uh? What's what's Isaac up to? What's Oscar yeah. doing? Let's get him in here. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a W. All right. But yeah. We got some good trailers this week. It's a, it's a decent week. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we got Craven. Uh, we haven't watched Craven on the podcast. We got the Craven trailer, the new one. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. I'm, re- I'm ready for these trailers. All right. That's Sony. <laughs> all right. The lockdown. Check this shit out. Oh, shit. I like these kinds of movies. This is on Paramount, so it might be a show. It says movie. Hmm. All right. We're kicking some ass. He looks like the Blue Ranger. Yeah, he does, right? Tobuscus. I thought that that was going to be a movie about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very interested in watching that. The lockdown. What scared shirtless? Shitless. Shitless. <laughs> Michael shitless. <laughs> okay. A lad drunk. They didn't put an ad on this. Mm-hmm. It's the dude from uh GTA, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're scared shitless. Jesus. That Pepto? Yeah. I feel that. What the fuck? Bottle locked. I had an ad. To BMW? Yeah. Yeah. Sleek. I know. Nice design. Yeah. High production, high performance vehicles. The fuck out of here. Backing it up. Frankie Frico? Yeah, this looks. I had to put this one close to that one because it's. Oh, okay. Same vibes? Yeah. Maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, it's Frankie Frico, dude. Yeah. He's like a Cabbage Patch kid. Garbage Pail, not Cabbage Patch. Mm-hmm. Connor. I'm loving the style. Yeah. What? Oh, shit. That's one of those things you wear on your dick, like it's in the ad. Don't they look like garbage pail kids? Yeah. Shama do. I 
I mean, what a blast from the, they used to make movies like this for real. Yeah. Like this has got the eighties written all over it. <laughs> oh no you're in his world I mean, it don't look bad. I can't believe it's going to theaters, though. Yeah. Like, I got an ad. Yeah. What is this? Call someone for a ride. Was he drinking and driving? I shouldn't do that. But Frankie Frico, dude. I'll be watching that. Yeah, I mean, why not? Right, Azriel, is this a Batman thing? Possibly. Okay. Yeah. It's rated R. It's a shutter. It's what the watcher should have been. Check this out. Yeah. After the rapture? Oh, shit. Sold American. And then they turn their backs and these things come. Damn. Look too shabby, huh? No. Cool concept. Yeah. BMW. Yeah, me too. I'm not going to buy one, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> that it's one funny that they're even spending money on here. Yeah. On Discord. We got a foreign. Yeah, this is a movie about what I'm fixing to be doing. Sleep. You don't want to do this. You'll see why.
Like that's that's kind of me. <laughs> that's kind of me for real, dude. Oh, video unavailable. Oh, I know why. Was it a red band trailer? No. Jamie Foxx leaked a trailer of a movie that's been shelved that he's in. Ah. Uh, BMW Ed. Got a it's nice man. A movie we couldn't release, All Star Weekend. Mm. Yeah, we got the front room. It's got brandy in it. Yeah, we saw a teaser for this. Okay. I know how that shit is. This is a completely different vibe from what that other thought? trailer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Mm. your dialect coach got some get out vibes some mother yeah. vibes yeah I'm definitely interested. I think that old lady's going to kill it in that movie. Yeah. Sure there's right. no ads. No, I'm good. We got Y2K. All right. Jonah Hill, executive producer. Yeah. <laughs> A24. Yeah. Playing it. <laughs> Snow White. I like this dude from New Zealand. He's funny. Boy, is it. Oh, shit. Varsity Blues, that's funny. You remember what you say? It's the end of the world for sure. That looks like the pizza dude from Stranger Things. It sounds like Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks pretty fun. Yeah. Is that Fred Durst? It is yeah. him. Wow. 
wild man now they're making the classics for us i know <laughs> that's crazy right it's craving right. it craving it right. right. i mean this movie's been pushed back like 16 times it's sony isn't it yeah i don't know we'll see I haven't watched this trailer. Mm hmm. Speaking of Russian. Oh. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Russell Crowe was on Rogan. Oh shit. At least there's blood. They gonna make this rated R, but they didn't make Venom rated R. Exactly, right. They killed. Hit him with a spit wad. <laughs> One hell of a spit wad. That guy, that's what happens when you take that rhino horn and you get the gas station. <laughs> the rhino pills? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'm in. Rest they don't look rhino bad, horn. honestly. Hang on, I got a Trump ad. Whoa. Wow. Let's see that on here. All right, we got the fucking whatever this is. Double I smart? Silence. Get a bottle tied to his leg. Is this the Star or the Neuralink movie? What did he say? Mm-hmm. We're back to the, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Say uncle. That's what she said. Clearly a wig. Hmm. Must be a model. Is there a song? Oh, there's the cops. Yep. There's a song. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Fast and Furious Mission Impossible. Upload completed. I think they're transferring that dude's consciousness into him, like. This movie's got a lot going on, dude. Yeah, it does, right? Like, look at that it's shit, on fire. dude. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Big bull, dude. They're shooting guns with their dicks. Yep, sex right. machine. What? Tarantino did it first. I have to check that one out. That's that. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I wasn't ready for that. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Big bull. Twisters. Is that what we're doing? Two of them. W. Both of them? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, the checks on the mail. And the flag is raised. 